What's up beautiful people, today we're going to be checking out Russia would have never invaded Ukraine under Trump and this is a statement made by Mike Pence. Let's get to it. In the live free or die state of New Hampshire, former Vice President Mike Pence delivered a speech on conservatism versus populism and the direction of the Republican Party under former President Trump's leadership. Take a look. So I came here to Ansel Anselm College to simply say from my heart that Republican voters face a choice. In the days to come, will we be the party of conservatism or will we follow the siren song of populism unmoored to conservative principles? All right, joining us now in studio, uh, let's give a warm welcome, former Vice President, 2024 Republican candidate Mike Pence is with us. <laughs> So obviously the line of a time for choosing the, the famous Reagan speech. Right. Um, populism versus conservatism. Um, you have said, and we've discussed this in great detail, you and you even said it in your speech today, that you are very proud of the all the accomplishments of the Trump Pence administration. I am. Okay. Mm -hmm. Do you, so do, was that a conservative run administration? Because I think your policies were conservative, but in some cases a little more populist, especially when it came to getting out of endless wars, et cetera, et cetera, things like that. What, well, well, look, let me begin by saying it's great to see you. Thank you. And uh, I'm running for president because I think this country's in a lot of trouble. I think we need new leadership in the White House, and we need to decide here and now that Joe Biden will never be reelected as president of the United States. But to do that, I think it's, it's not just going to be, you know, who is our standard bearer, but what we stand for. And I want to agree with you very strongly. I think in the Trump-Pence administration, we governed as conservatives. We rebuilt our military. We stood with our allies, stood up to our enemies. I mean, we cut taxes, rolled back regulation, unleashed American energy, created more than 7 million good-paying jobs, and achieved energy independence for the first time in 75 years. And maybe most important of all, we appointed three conservatives to our Supreme Court who gave America a new beginning for the right to life. So we governed as conservatives. But I must tell you, I, I honestly believe that there's a, a rising movement uh, within the Republican Party that I think will be a part of a debate in this primary about whether or not we're going to stay on that track of those timeless conservative principles of a strong national defense, American leadership in the world, limited government, fiscal responsibility, and the right to life, or whether we're going to follow the siren song of populism unmoored to conservative principle. And by that, I mean there, there are voices in our party uh, that uh, not just my former running mate, but others that uh, were on that stage with me a few weeks ago uh, that uh, want to walk away from American leadership on the world stage, uh, literally want to want to abandon our commitment as the arsenal of democracy and the leader of the free world uh, on the national debt. Look, we, we have a we have a national debt the size of our nation's economy for mm -hmm. the first time since World War II. Joe Biden's policy is insolvency. He won't even talk about the entitlements that represent 70 percent of our federal budget today. And it disappoints me that the former president and others uh, vying for the Republican nomination have the same position as Joe Biden. On the right to life, uh, with maybe one exception in the field, virtually every candidate for the Republican nomination wants to marginalize the right to life, relegate it to the states only. And I want people to know that if I'm president of the United States, you're going to have a champion for the right to life in the Oval Office, and we'll fight for protections for the unborn in every state house in America and in Washington, D.C. Let, let me get into the, a little bit more of the specifics. In, in many ways, and I've said this to you and I've said this to former President Trump, it was a, the perfect partnership, but for the end. That a fair, I mean, and I know it's a big but. I know there was a big disagreement. Oh, we had a great, we had a great working relationship. Right. And, and I got to see that. I was there enough, doing enough interviews that I saw that. Yeah, you look, you know, President Trump was not only my president, he was my friend. Uh, so was? You guys are not friends anymore because you're contesting against each other? Some people think we were a little bit different, right? A little? 
But the truth is, uh, truth the, is, I, personality I wise, that, you guys are pretty different. I, I honestly think that uh, in, in 2016, no. Donald Trump told America that he would govern as a conservative. He obviously had a very diverse political past. He'd, he'd taken liberal and conservative views over the years. There was a lot of doubt about that at the time. Well, there was, and, and some people, I'm humbled to say it, but some people thought that his selection of me as someone that had been in the conservative movement almost as long as you have mm -hmm. uh, gave evidence of the fact that he Gee, thanks and a I, lot. Almost as long. And I, but look, I, I, give, uh, I give President Trump a lot of credit. We did govern as a conservative administration. Do you, do you think he would change this time? Is there, and, and what do you think changed? Well, or is, is changing? Or what views do you believe he would change on? Well, I just, I, I think we, there, there are voices in the movement far beyond the Republican primary today mm -hmm. that look at war raging in Eastern Europe. Ukraine. And suggest to the American people that we have to choose between being the leader of the free world and solving problems here at home. You know, I made it very clear, look, uh, any, anybody that says that we can't solve the problems facing American families here at home, that we can't secure our borders, bring law and order to our cities, and be the leader of the free world, has a pretty small opinion of the greatest nation on earth. We can do both. We're America. Let me ask you and this. And I believe that it's imperative on us to produce leadership that, that is willing to step forward and say that. I believe there would be a big difference on the issue of Ukraine, for example, if it was the Trump-Pence administration. You would have insisted and demanded sure. that Europe pay their fair share and protect their continent first. They're not doing that. Also, just the way you beat the caliphate and took out Soleimani and Baghdadi right. and associates, right. you would, if you fought a war or committed to, to even some of, of taxpayer money, you would insist they fight to win it. You wouldn't have vetoed 28 MIGS that the way Joe Biden. Sean, the Russians would have never invaded Ukraine. I agree with because that. Because we'd have never had that disastrous revolve in that yeah. We've got to have leadership to stand strong on the world stage. And uh, this is an important debate. It's yeah. just now beginning. Labor Day is behind us. The Republican primary is getting started. But I want people to know that I'm the most qualified, the most proven, the most tested conservative in this field. And I'm going to fight for a Republican Party that's grounded in those timeless conservative principles. We'll see you out at the Reagan Library, uh, if not sooner. Thank you, sir. Great. Thank you, Sean. Thank you. Hey, Sean. I feel like the thing about the Conservative Party, they have a very difficult time differentiating themselves. People come like pick and choose like the tiniest little bits on why they might be better than Trump or why their policies are different from Trump's. You know, I say that because we've seen Vivek Ramaswamy trying to do the same thing, but it, it almost feels like it's, it's too minute for people to recognize that you're going to be better than Trump. I don't know if that makes sense. Like the policies are almost the same that when you're stating it, automatically people's minds reflect to the most popular person in the category, which in context would be Trump. So even from what he was saying, he said right to life when he's going to protect every life. It's hard to really differentiate if that's the only policy you're bringing that is separate from what Trump, Vivek, and DeSantis are bringing to the table. So it's almost like we just link all of them together. I don't know if it's just me. It could just be only me thinking that way. Yeah, because when I hear like their policies and what they'll be doing, it sounds similar. And once I hear the similarities, I automatically think, oh, Trump, you know? I'm not saying vote for Trump. I'm not in America, so I'm not asking you to vote for anybody. It's your choice. Anyways, that was a, an interesting one. If I was like to contest, uh, the, the principle I might use or the policy difference would be, I would say Trump has been accused of so many things. So right now he's going to be ruling from the defensive and that is not really a leader we want. We want a leader who's going to rule with a clear mind. That would be my stance. But like since he's ruling from the defensive and trying to almost fight the Democrats, it's going to be difficult for him to reunite, reunite the nation. You know, Democrats and Republicans, liberal and conservative, it's going to be difficult for him to do that. And because of that, that's why I come in, you know, to rule, be a leader, an objective leader, rule with a clear mind. And I have nothing to defend against because I'm an outsider. Something in that ma manner. That's how I present my, my topic. I don't know if somebody else has done it. I don't even know if it makes sense, but just off the top of my head, that's what I can think of. Let me know what you think. I'm just thinking aloud <laughs> on camera. My goodness. Hopefully I didn't say anything wrong. I'm not going to edit it, but share yours. You know, think aloud too in the comment section. Talk to me. If there's anything you want to add, critical, correct, please feel free to do so. And also remember, I'm not a professional. 
never been a politician i'm just really thinking aloud um that being said smash the like button subscribe and i'll see you on the next one peace I'm